Hello and welcome to another episode of me gushing about stuff I'd seen in London. Last week I went on one of my little theatre sprees and I've seen eight shows in total and I want to tell you about them. Because the runs of all these shows in London tend to be quite short, all of them are gonna end very soon, basically. So um, if you are compelled to go and see something, do it straight away, otherwise, well, sorry. But I do believe that there is a certain value in just documenting what is on offer. So I hope that even if you can't go and see these shows, this might be interesting just to learn about uh, what's going on. My favourite show of the week was Mary Stewart at the Almeida Theatre. You've heard me talk about the Almeida, it is a place where I always love to go. And Mary Stewart in particular was an incredibly interesting production. The main uh, thing about it is that in the beginning of the show two actresses toss a coin on stage to determine who's playing the role of Mary Stewart and who's playing Elizabeth I. The two actresses are Leah Williams and Juliet Stevenson and they're both brilliant. I have personally seen uh, Juliet Stevenson as Elizabeth but Apparently the, the other version is equally good, which is just so interesting and uh, the way it's done just adds so much to the, to the show. It, it is a very powerful moment, these two potential enemies first coming on stage and uh, there is so much tension tossing the coin. There are all these men from the court on stage and when it's done they all simultaneously turn to Elizabeth and bow very deeply and sort of start ignoring Mary Stuart which was just such a powerful moment and it it's not just a gimmick it really adds to the themes of this play which is about these two incredibly powerful women whose fates are sort of determined by destiny. Just one of them is the queen of the more powerful country. While in the text someone quite often says how similar they are in certain aspects. So it really is chance in a way which determines that they are in such a different position. The production itself is very simple. It's happening on a on an empty round stage which occasionally revolves. Everything is stripped bare so it really is about the actors themselves. The translation is very melodic but easy to listen to and I thought almost all of the actors were really good but the, the two leading ladies especially. The director Robert Icke often brings them onto stage simultaneously even if they're not in a scene together but you can sort of see the contrasts between them. It is glorious, I have to say. Also, the production was very much about the people around them and how they react to these women, which was also a very interesting aspect of it. The same director, Robert Icke, also did a play at the National Theatre called The Red Barn. It is an adaptation of a novel by George Simenon and it was adapted by David Hare. I was slightly disappointed by the text itself because it, to me personally, it read very much like a novel or a film um, in that the story was quite linear. So I thought it was lacking a bit of the drama. Also the main part is played by Mark Strong who I had seen previously on stage and I thought it, he was brilliant, but in this I think he was miscast actually. Yeah, can I say that? Hope it doesn't offend anyone. <laughs> but I really appreciated how this production was staged. I don't really know how to describe it, but there was this black curtain thing uh, that could sort of narrow down so it worked like this frame and also the stage design was just fascinating because uh, it closed for such a short period of time and then it started opening again and there was a different set behind it so it almost felt like one of those tricks when you uh, have a 
box of matches and you open it one way and it's empty and you, you open it the other way and there are the matches in it. <laughs> this might not be the best comparison but that's how it felt to me because it like closed over this part of the stage and very shortly it opened again and there was something else here so I thought it was just incredibly clever and if this doesn't win an Olivier for design I'm gonna be very sad. Then I saw a very famous and old production by the National Theatre, The Inspector Calls by J.B. Priestley. The director Stephen Daldry did this in the early 90s and it sort of brought this old play back to attention. It ran forever, it was incredibly successful and now it's back to the West End for a, for a short period. The play at first seems quite stereotypical but then it turns into this very current, almost political discussion about the responsibility for your own actions, which tied really well into the post-Brexit climate. And uh, the genre of it uh, really interestingly balances between comedy and uh, this political appeal. And this theme of uh, social responsibility was almost the theme of my whole trip, I felt. It kept cropping up in almost all of the productions that I've seen. At uh, the Garrick Theatre I saw This House by James Graham. It is a play from 2012, I believe, so this is a revival. It is about the Labour Party in the 70s particularly something called the Whip Office. This play is slightly more difficult to follow than the others, uh, just because it's such a specific topic and I didn't know that much about uh, the, the daily life of these politicians before. But I feel like I've learned a lot and I did enjoy it. Um, and the ending... Can I say it? No, I won't say it what the ending is, but... It was emotional, guys. At the Royal Court, I've seen a play called The Children by Lucy Kirkwood. I was a bit surprised that this was not about children. It was about old people. But again, it was about the social responsibility because these people worked at a nuclear power plant. Now this catastrophe happened. The place is incredibly dangerous. These three people ponder about their responsibility for this, for the environment and uh, what they should or shouldn't uh, do for the next generation. The play is written incredibly cleverly. It happens in one evening actually and a lot of the backstory of these characters is revealed in a very very skillful way. It's current but not too modern or experimental. At the Trafalgar Studios downstairs I've seen a play called BU21 which was about a fictional tragedy happening in 2017. A plane being shot down and falling onto London. It was partly based verbatim on people's stories from previous catastrophes but uh, not entirely. That's what I wasn't sure about actually, the messiness of uh, the verbatim and not really. Because of the speculative nature of this play, uh, a catastrophe happening in summer 2017, I think it would have been nice if it was slightly more sort of grounded. I did feel it was actually a bit stereotypical and didn't really bring a new approach or anything, so I was a bit disappointed by this. And then I've seen a couple of shows that were mainly for children, but adults as well, of course. Uh, the first one was The Little Mudge Girl and Other Happier Tales at the Globe, uh, specifically at the Sam Wanamaker Playhouse, which is a very small theatre and uh, it's uh, like a indoor part of the globe. It was directed by the current artistic director Emma Rice. It was an incredibly lovely production. They used puppets partly, 
and uh, the company was just so talented there was a lot of singing it was just a joy to watch them really the Sam Wanamaker Playhouse is lit only by candles so the atmosphere is beautiful my only criticism was that I could hardly see which was just frustrating I had only paid 10 pounds for a standing seat but I do still expect to see something and um, yeah the, the view wasn't great so I would definitely recommend uh, buying one of the more expensive uh, seats if you if you ever go to this theatre and the last one was Peter Pan at the National Theatre again beautiful very imaginative it was by the same director who did Jane Eyre last year at the National, which I thought was even better. That was just an inspired production, really. But Peter Pan was lovely as well. It was very cute and children-friendly without dumbing anything down. There were also a few songs, not many, so the pace was quite lively. Obviously, All Flying was just magical. Who doesn't like flying in theatre? Peter Pan was a bit of a douche, I thought. I wasn't sure about him personally. But the show as a whole still worked very well. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this interesting. I hope I inspired you to maybe go to see some more theatre as well. And uh, let me know if you have seen any of these. And I'll see you next time. Bye!